Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson we're going to focus in on whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So pretty basic stuff, but we're going to use calculus to do it, so of course it's going to be just a little bit harder than you're used to. First off, we have to always know where a critical point is. So as a reminder, a critical point is where the derivative is zero, or where the derivative does not exist. So where does that happen on this graph of f of x? Again, this is the function f of x graph. Well, that's gonna happen when the derivative is zero here, when the derivative is zero here, or when the derivative does not exist because it's a corner. All right, so let's label those things on our little table here. Now I gave myself some space in between these because in these regions, in these intervals, so before negative three, excuse me, before three, in between three and five, in between five and six, and then from six to infinity. In these intervals, I know that the function is either going to be increasing or decreasing. It's going up or it's going down. Okay, because right at these values, at these critical points, here the derivative was zero, here the derivative was zero, and here the derivative did not exist. So in between them, I know that it's either going to be going up or down. So you can just read this. That function's positive. It's going up. So the sine of f prime, I should say. The sine of the f prime is positive. Here, f prime is negative because the function's going down. Here, now the function's going to go up. So on that interval, the f prime is positive. And then here, since the function's going down, f prime is negative negative. The slope of the function is negative. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing today. We're just going to be using some calculus techniques and looking at just the f prime graph. All right, so let's get started on this. First thing is we need to find the critical point. So here's a function and we're trying to figure all the intervals in which it's decreasing or increasing. So let's go ahead and first take the derivative. So I have negative 2x minus 4. So the critical points are going to be when the derivative does not exist, which nothing here, I don't have to worry about that, or when the derivative equals 0. So if I take this thing and solve it, I'm going to end up with add 4 divided by negative 2, x equals negative 2. So that's my critical point. In between the x values, the derivative must be positive or negative. So I take my critical points, all of them, and I'm going to use a chart to help keep track of all this information. So I would put right in the middle of my chart here, I'm going to put a negative 2. So I know that the sine of f prime at negative 2 is 0. How do I know that? Because I just solved for it. I just said, when does f prime equal 0? Solved it. I got that. Okay, so now I just need to know before it and after it. So you create your little table of values here to keep track of things. And I want uh, an interval that's before negative two. So that's negative infinity to negative two. And then after negative two to the right of it would be negative two to infinity. So now, now I need the sine. On this interval, what is the sine of f prime? So where's f prime? f prime is up here, right? So I have negative two x minus four. So I can plug in any number I want. So usually I'll take the derivative and say negative two times huge number that's negative, a negative really big number, right? And then minus four. Well, this is just negative two times negative huge is positive huge number, minus four. And so that's going to make this positive. We don't need to know what the number is, we just need to know the sign. Is the sign of f prime positive or negative? Okay, now let's come over here. If I do the same thing, I'm gonna take negative two and times it by an, a, a positive number, right? I'm going way off to the right, or, Oh, even better, zero falls in that. So I'm just gonna plug in a zero. That makes this easier. Minus four, negative two times zero, zero minus four. So that is going to be negative. That made it even easier. I like using zero whenever it's inside the interval. It makes it go kind of fast. Now the answer statements, and this is the important part. The answer statements for this would be, when is it increasing? It is increasing, f is increasing, on the interval negative infinity to negative two because, and this is the justification, because f prime of x is greater than zero. In other words, that the slope is positive. So this is how you say that. It's increasing because the slope is positive, but really it's the calculus that we use is f prime is greater than zero. And then we say f is decreasing on the interval negative two to infinity because f prime is less than zero. Okay, that's the big main point of what we're trying to do today. Find the critical points, Identify the intervals where it might the, the f prime could be positive or negative, and then you write your justification statement. Okay, get that down. I'm going to go to another one. Next example. All right, so this one. I'm going to have you pause and just find the critical values and try and fill out your chart. Okay, so just the critical values and fill out 
uh, just the X values. I'm sorry, just the X values on the chart. So go ahead and do that now. Pause the video and do that. So hopefully you came up with my critical points that I had here, which is negative three and positive five by taking the derivative, setting the derivative equal to zero and solving. So that means I have these intervals that I've written down on my chart. And then I already know that the critical points, the derivative is going to be zero here and the derivative on that one is going to be zero. So now all I need is the sign in between them. So before you start doing this, you have two options to use for the derivative. I have the original derivative that I have here and then I have the factored form of the derivative. I like using the factored form personally when all I'm trying to do is find the sign because if I plug in a negative number, a negative really big number into this, you don't have to know what the number is. You just have to know the sign. So watch this. I'm going to have uh, a negative big number minus five is still negative times a negative big number plus three is also still negative. So I have a negative times a negative, which is positive. See how I do that? You don't have to actually figure out the exact number, just the sign. Now I have another interval, negative three to five. Well, zero is on this interval, so I'm gonna use zero. Zero minus five is negative number. And then the next one is zero plus three is a positive number. So that gives me a negative. Negative and a positive make a negative. Now on the last one, don't just assume it's gonna be positive, all right? So I have a positive here, a negative here. Don't just think, oh, it's just going back to positive. It does, okay? But don't assume it because sometimes you'll go negative, zero, and then negative again. You have to check to make sure. So I'm gonna plug in a number that's really big and then subtract five, I get a positive. And then really big plus three is also positive. So that just gives me a positive derivative. Okay, now our justification statements. Answers with justification. We say that f is increasing from negative infinity to negative three and from five to infinity because the first derivative is positive. f prime is positive, okay? So I had the positive sign, positive sign, so it's gotta be going up on those intervals. And then the other one, f is decreasing right between here, negative three to five, because f prime of x is less than zero, okay? These statements are really important to get used to writing down for your justification. Okay, pause if you don't have all that written down before, uh, and then I'll go to the next one. Now we're gonna look at the graph of f prime and determine what's going on with f. So if we look at just the graph of f prime, can we get some idea of what f is doing? Yes, we can, because right here, I'm gonna highlight this in blue, that part of f prime, f prime is positive right there. And here, I'm gonna do this one in blue, that above the x-axis, that also means that f prime is positive. And if f prime is positive, that means we have an increasing function of f. The original function f must be going up where I have highlighted this in blue. So what we say is just from f prime, we can say on the interval negative infinity to negative three and on the interval one to three, what I have in blue here, the graph of f is increasing. And then what I have in red are the, the areas that represent when the graph would be decreasing, when f is decreasing. So it's negative three to one and three to infinity. And then our justification statement is because f prime is less than zero. So again, please make sure you understand this part. It's going to show up a lot this year. And that is when we give, are given the derivative of f prime, the graph of f prime, can you tell if the graph is increasing or decreasing? And our last topic to cover is the application of a rate of change. So when we want to know if something's increasing or decreasing, you just have to look at the sign, positive or negative sign of the rate of change. So if we have a sign of a rate of change, the sign of a rate of change can tell you if the dependent variable, in other words, the, the y values, the y variables, if the dependent variable is increasing or decreasing. So let's interpret this. If I have students per year, so just remember that the y, it's always y, the change in y, I should write it like that, the change in y over the change in x. That's what the that's what rate of change is or slope. So y values are students per year. If it's positive, that means it's growing. So what is growing? The number of students per year is growing. The number of students is increasing. Yeah, that's how you say it, that's right. The number of students is increasing. So here, if we have miles per hour and that is negative, then that means the number of miles is decreasing. Mastery checks per week. If mastery checks per week is positive, then the number of mastery checks is increasing. And then the last case is a little bit weird. If we have virus cases per month squared, per month squared, so that means it's virus cases per month per month. That would mean that the rate of virus cases per month is decreasing. It's like the derivative of virus cases per month. 
So it's kind of like the second derivative, if you want to think of it that way. So uh, this is application of looking at if something's increasing or decreasing. And the reason that's important, get, get this written, pause and write this down if you don't have it yet. The reason that's important is because of problems like this. The rate of change of fruit flies in Mr. Kelly's kitchen and at time t days is modeled by blah, blah, blah stuff, flies per day. Show that the number of flies is decreasing at time t equals three. So how are we gonna prove that the number of flies is decreasing? So the question is, do we figure out what r of three equals or do we figure out what r prime of three equals? Well, the way you know is this. Show that the number of flies. So what we need to know if the number of flies is decreasing, we need the number of flies. Let me write this out. The number of, not fries, sorry. That's the F, that's an L. The number of flies derivative, or in other words, their rate. We need to know the rate of change of the number of flies. So that's what you need to know. If that thing is negative, number, the rate of change of the number of flies. And they told us right here, the rate of change of fruit flies in Mr. Kelly's kitchen. So this already is the rate of change. So all we need is this one, right? This one gives you the rate of change of the rate of change. So you wanna be real careful with this. You have to carefully read what the problem is giving you. So when you do that, when you plug this three in, I've already done it in advance, so I already know what it is. It's approximately negative 5.466. And then if you truncated, it would end there. If you rounded, you'd, you'd round this up to seven, whichever you wanted to do. So the number of flies is decreasing, decreasing because, I'm gonna abbreviate here, decreasing because R of three is less than zero. Okay, so let me tell you how you could get this wrong. You might say decreasing, but if you plug this in, I don't even know. Maybe this is maybe this is negative. I didn't even tr check yet to see what r prime of three is. But it doesn't matter what this is. If you put r prime of three is negative, you would miss this problem. This would be totally wrong because the justification is wrong. It's the number of flies is decreasing because the rate of change is negative. Okay, so just be careful when you're reading these problems. Recognize does it say rate of change or not? Okay, that's everything. We've covered all for increasing, decreasing functions. So rock that mastery check, and I will see you back in the next lesson.